Welcome to Winning STL, where we have conversations about how St. Louis can best compete and win in the battle for talent, jobs, growth, and equity. Winning STL is sponsored by the Hartford Small Business Insurance, and we're at the train shed at St. Louis's Union Station in the midst of the St. Louis Aquarium, the Wheel, and more. And I'm here with Tom Schmidt, owner of Salt and Smoke. Tom, thanks for coming. Great to have you. Great to be here. So, Tom, um, you have a long history of restaurant ownership in St. Louis. It didn't start with Salt and Smoke. I, I thought it might be interesting for people watching this. What preceded that, and how did it become Salt and Smoke? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, my first restaurant was in Soulard. It, it was called Franco, opened in 2006, and did wonderfully. Really loved it. It was a French kind of fine dining restaurant. And then in 2012, in the loop, I opened Franco's little brother, Nico. I loved it. I really loved the design of it. Over the course of about two and a half years, they had real challenges, both in kind of at the start in terms of concept and execution that we could never get over the perception of, but really, I think, had a terrible idea of how to connect with the neighborhood and be something that was meaningful relevant and inviting to people that were walking up and down the loop. What I, what I started thinking about was kind of like, this area is packed. There's something wrong with what I'm doing here. And that's when uh, I started working on the concept to convert it to a barbecue restaurant. And, and when you did it, you gave yourself a leisurely five days, I think, <laughs> or something you'd mentioned to turn this into yeah. salt and smoke. Well, uh, I mean, so over the course of a couple of years, uh, while we tried to figure out and make Nico work, and I was in the background developing salt and smoke. And so when it came time to pull the trigger, talked to Haley Riley, who's now my business partner and co-owner at Salt and Smoke, and he was thrilled about it. So together with my wife as well, uh, she designed almost all of it. And then when the time came, we were so broke and behind on bills. Yeah, we couldn't miss a weekend of sales. Right. Uh, so we closed after dinner service on a Saturday and, and opened five days later for lunch on a Friday. Um, yeah, and kind of through, through our Hail Mary. And now here you are, Salt and Smoke, pretty iconic part of St. Louis, I would say right now. You have, I think, six locations, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, does, you know, when you had this idea for barbecue, did, did you even see that it would be this that no. salt and smoke would be what it is no not at all i <laughs> the morning that we opened on friday june 13th i had to mail out fourteen thousand dollars of checks and back checks to vendors who were like we won't send you groceries <laughs> this week unless you send out a check and uh i mailed them out and there was only a hundred dollars in the checking account when i mailed out the fourteen thousand dollars so i was like screw it like either this is going to work and we're going to have money in the account for those checks to clear on monday or it won't, and we're already, we're already shot. Go move back in with my parents, you know? So you're making this awfully, sound awfully enticing to people <laughs> who might want to open a restaurant. Yeah, um, yeah, no, but no. So the goal was only to keep the lights on. There, there was no grander vision or plan, you know? So as someone that has done this with, with great success, um, the bar to be successful over time is just really, really difficult. Yeah, to continue being successful and keeping it open is really hard and, and um, you know, if you're lucky enough to get the right concept and the right space with great food, when you don't have like intense economic headwinds and all of those things, like if you're lucky enough to get five or six of those things right, where you're not dead in the water before you even open, um, then what it comes down to is being able to sustain that. And the only way to do that is by creating a really wonderful, hospitable environment for the people that you work with. And if you can, attract better talent and retain great people and keep them engaged with kind of your mission and vision, then you have a shot, you know, but if you're trying to do it, if I was trying to do it all myself right now, I, it would have failed years ago. We would right. have packed up just because it, right. it, it's too heavy a task for, for any person. You, you really need people to help you. So, so Tom, you are born and raised in St. Louis, uh, U-City. U-City, down the street and, from the original store. Um, and you now have six locations. And I guess you're, you're putting your money where your mouth is. You're, in, yeah. you're opening up new locations. So, so you feel like, you know, we try not to put our head in the sand. We know we've got challenges here, like every Metro does. You feel like uh, good things are happening and they're going to happen in the future. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was so much fear and trepidation around us opening downtown um 
And I was afraid of it too. I mean, I, I, it's really easy to believe and latch on to the negative things that people say okay. rather than on the positive possibilities. Um, and we moved forward uh, believing we were making the right decision but had a lot of fear and thought, okay, we'll be busy during baseball games and then we'll figure out how not to lose a lot of money not during baseball games. Uh, and the reality is that store is our busiest store in the company. And there's more coming back. Conventions are coming back. People are coming back to the office. There's more activity in life down there. The pandemic was really hard, but I mean, it's the center of gravity for this city and, and it needs a big beating heart to maintain that. What is going on, I think is really positive and it is building kind of a, a head of momentum to it. What do you think um, are the natural strengths of our region? Like, what are the, you know, hey, this is what we should double down on. This is what we should invest in because it's what we're good at. It's who we are. That, I mean, you could take that any number yeah. of ways, but um, be interested. Barbecue is such a huge part of our fabric and our identity nationwide. And, and the blues uh, music scene mm -hmm. is a huge part of that identity. And, uh, you know, our sports teams and our you know, heartland of America, crossroads of America, connected to the Mississippi River and all the major highways. Right. And this is kind of the intersection of where all business and, and kind of uh, tourism can cross through. You know, there's so many positives with that as this hub in the region, you know, when Nashville started having this renaissance 15 years ago, right? They were probably three to four times smaller than St. Louis. And so, it only had one center of gravity that needed to start being built on to continue Got and it. kind of change that narrative. What the, the challenge of St. Louis is you have the loop and you have downtown and you have Tower Grove and Central you have Clayton End, yeah. and you have Central West End. And so there is, you know, it's a really large city with a lot of resources um, when you really think about kind of the whole region. And it, it, there's, so there's more challenges around that. So there, there's not as many easy wins and it takes more consensus. and and kind of uh, a lot a lot more effort. But uh, but I think that's the benefit, too, is like there, there's more there's more to this region. There's more infrastructure that I think we can build on if we kind of start wanting to work together. All right, Tom, back uh, momentarily to the to the restaurant scene. How would you compare St. Louis's food scene overall to some other cities that that we that we all might be go to on occasion? I think we've out punched our weight for decades in this town. And I, I really think it goes back to what Feast did and what Sauce did. Those publications were really important to elevating the conversation and making the public aware of us. And uh, But we had a much stronger foundation uh, than I think other cities in in kind of the same size as us. Because And I think it was because of that kind of, you know, amplified voice that everybody had. Great. Well, I, I was that was really good. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Thank you.